Jay, the third Sunday of Advent. We had the usual lunch after Mass. Um, the Epistle of today, third Sunday of Advent, taken from the Epistle of St. Philip, <clears throat> from the Philippians. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again I say, rejoice. Let your modesty be known to all men. The Lord is nigh, be nothing solicitous, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your petitions be made known to God, and the peace of God which surpasses all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Please stand for the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel is taken from St. John, chapter 1. At that time, the Jews sent from Jerusalem priests and Levites to John to ask him, Who art thou? And he, and he confessed and did not deny, and he confessed, I am not the Christ. And they asked him, What then? Art thou Elias? And he said, I am not. Art thou the prophet? And he answered, No. They said therefore unto him, Who art thou? That we may give answer to them that sent us. What sayest thou thyself? And he said, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness, Make straight the way of the Lord, as said the prophet Isaiah. And they that were sent were of the Pharisees. And they asked him, and said to him, Why then dost thou baptize, if thou not be Christ, nor Elias, nor the, nor the prophet? John answered them, saying, I baptize with water, but there has stood one in the midst of you, who I know, who, whom you know not. The same is he that shall come after me, who is preferred before me, the latchet whose shoe I am not worthy to loose. These things were done in Bethania, beyond the Jordan, where John was baptizing. Please be seated. Gaudete in Domino Semper. Rejoice always in the Lord. So we have the third Sunday of Advent, and we have the, the rose-colored vestments to let us know that during Advent we are making sacrifices and we are preparing ourselves for the, the physical birth of Christ. Our Lord came physically to, um, on Christmas, and Advent is to prepare us for the, the physical of the second coming also. So we have Advent and the third Sunday as the church is always there to help us with all its rules and it's um, you know, the bridegroom of Christ, as this week we have the coming of the, the Ember Days. So just a reminder there, the Ember Days, we have the, the, the partial fast there. And, uh, and the church gives us on major vigils, uh, major feasts, a vigil, which there's a fast also. This Sunday, the vigil will last on this Sunday, but it would take, carry over to Saturday which on um, Sundays there is no fast, always. Um, so it, with the church, it's always um, to, to guide us. And this Sunday, as we have Gaudete, rejoice. And what is this rejoicing? The rejoicing is, as it is in, in the epistle, and the peace of God which surpasses all understanding. What is this peace? The peace is living our lives in the state of sanctifying grace, knowing God. Gaudete, rejoice. Not, there's many people that do not have the faith. Many people that, till the moment of death, by grace of somebody's prayer, there'll be a miracle that they'll come to knowledge of it. But other than that, um, we, as Catholics, are given the faith, and it's not just in vain. So it's something we do have very much to rejoice in. And as a Sunday, how um, we're getting closer to the birth of Christ, it's something to remember that um, we do, with that grace, is something to, even though with all the trials we go through and everything, there's always that rejoicing that we must have, especially by carrying the faith. And, um, and as our, our Lord says, surpass all understanding. So it says something that we have to remind ourselves through all these the crosses and the trials we go through, losing a family member and all that, they're all given to us by God 
to, to help us get closer to him. So we have to always be mindful of that. And I was bringing up a saying that uh, if the devil can't get you to sin, he's going to try to make you busy. So especially in the time in the world now, even with Christmas, we get so caught up of you know, everything and you know, getting someone the right gift. And if someone gets one, they spent more money. It's very, especially this time, we have to practice with uh, the virtues, you know, love, faith, and, and charity, especially humility in this time. Humility is very rare, and especially it takes only someone in the state of high grace to practice humility. So it's something that um, to follow, follow the Christ, we do have to have humility. And especially in this time of Advent, there's many times that there's those opportunities we need to, to offer those opportunities up. So do take these times, especially um, the world, it's so, you know, with all the craziness that's going on in it, um, it's very easy to get sidetracked and busy ourselves. Because we do have the help, we do have the graces to to conquer any situation. Um, no matter how wicked the world seems, especially the crisis in the church, everything, we want to get so, get involved in something, we get involved, like, it's, it's our human nature to always have the blame for somebody else. It's not something that, well, I don't have that problem. And it's, it started from the beginning, right? You know, when Adam sinned, he blamed Eve, and Eve sinned, he blamed the devil, and so forth. So... Um, it's something that it's very easy to get caught up in. So in this world, it's you know we always want to if something's going wrong, it's very easy to say it's somebody else's fault. And especially in the church and everything else, we want to look at someone else or this is why things are happening to me because of this happening or and we want to get involved in something else to take you know sight on what actually what's going on in our lives. But we do need to take this time during Advent to think of our souls, to think of, to slow down at a pace, to, to to actually think about what actually matters. Because it's very easy to get caught up in everything of the world, and even though most of the time it's not a sin in itself, but to commit the sin, it takes, you know, it takes you away from the prayers. Because if you keep strong in your prayers, then there's no way of falling. God's grace, the devil has no power, the world has no power. And no matter how wicked the times are, no matter, um, the people say, oh, the times are so wicked, you know, it's, you, I don't, it's not a good time to have a family or to raise anybody. You want to live out in the mountains. No, that's not the case. In all, in all time, from the beginning into the end, it is God's time. We need to remember that we need the faith to be, remember that we, and the, most of it's, it's always our fault because we don't have that faith of calling upon the saints, calling upon our blessed mother, especially our blessed mother, Calling upon her, no matter what situation we're gonna we're gonna triumph over, and especially the devil wants very much to make it like that. There's nobody out there to help us. We're alone. We're the kind of last crusader out there. But that's false. We have the triumph of saints. We have the blessed mother, always at our side. But it's something we have to not lose sight of, and don't think that we're by ourselves. And especially in this, especially in Advent, we have this moment to rejoice as we have the flowers on the altar. To um, the church is always there with all the rules of the church and everything. It's always to bring us closer to God. It's always to help us, and especially with this season of Advent, and especially with the fasting. Like people, are like why do we have to, you know, not eat meat on Friday? Maybe you'll ask that. Why? Right? Why? Why specifically that? And the church always has, you know, always has a reason for every, you know everything it does, and especially not having meat on Friday. Um, it's like why meat? Why can I give up something that? I know something else, and the church chooses meat because meat is flesh, and our Lord, you know, gave His flesh for our own salvation. So that's one thing. We got, we're giving up flesh, and because our Lord gave all, you know, gave His flesh for our self, our salvation, and and um, meat itself is something that all of us, by giving that for that day, it it actually helps us. It's something that it's something. It's not something that we need every day. So it's something that it actually balances us, our, our, even our diet. And every time we fast, it always always gives us that, that strength and closer to God. So it's something that no matter what we do, you're training for an athlete or anything, there always has to be that fasting. And with the fasting, it does, like they always say that, actually it is the, you know, the, the fathers that you know, lived in the desert and all that. You always say, wow, why do they like something to live forever? And they're like triple digits, 105, 120. One was 140. And you're like, well, what do they eat? 
but they lived with fasting. And they said the one that lived the longest was 140. He said his whole life, he never had a full meal. So there's something about fasting, and St. Bernard mentions about fasting that it's kind of a preparation of letting us know that in this world we're fasting. We don't get the things that we, we like, I wish I had this, but it's not. It's not going to benefit us. So it's, we're fasting in this life, fasting in this world to get to, to heaven. As St. Bernard says, he says, this world, we're fasting. We don't want the things of the world because it, it doesn't help us. And same with fasting. It always is for the greater good. As before, we have a great major feast or something. The church puts the fasting. Um, vigil, um, in Latin, it's the vigili, meaning the, the coming of a festival. So it's something that it's always to prepare us. There's always, for a great feast, you fast. Before we get to our end, which is to get to heaven, we, we fast from the the, the, kind of the veins of the, of the world. So it is something that do take this time during Advent to remember to slow down and to get that, that prayer in, get that extra thought up to our Lord and to our Lady, and remember all the saints that we have. We're going to meet them. We're going to meet our guardian angel, and remember all our relatives, all our relatives that have gone before us, and they're finally in heaven by the prayers. Um, they are there cheering us on, and just as the saints are provoking to help us, they are up there too helping and as her mother is of the role, the ultimate um, mother of all of us, she nonstop and ceaselessly is there trying to help us to get us to our true home. As a true mother wants to do you know, the best for their child, our Blessed Mother is always unceasingly trying to get us there. So remember, do you think it's time to call upon us, to call upon her? And I know we get, sometimes we get, you know, you know cut the chate or whatever, some the Protestant thing, you know, go to our Lord. Um, we have to remember that it's through Our Lady. Our Lady is the one that's going to help us. Our Lady is the one that's going to give us the grace. Remember, as the beautiful epistle of December 8th, how before all things were created, she was there. She was there guiding, preparing everything to making sure she can be the mother of all of us to get us to our true home. So from the beginning, we have to remember that she's the main part of her salvation, as one of our bishop sermons mentioned about everyone that goes to heaven is by her grace and um, as... Many, anyone that ever lost their soul that goes to hell is because they rejected Our Lady. Because uh, by they mentioned how Our Lord uh, did so many miracles that the books can't contain them. But He does His first miracle by Our Lady, letting us know that going through her, even though there's many prayers that probably wouldn't be answered, but we go through her, those prayers will be answered. Just keep that in mind, and with this, you know, blessed season Advent to remember to. Make sure we get those extra sacrifices in there. Remember, the sacrifices are not something that, well, why does the church do this, or it's a church law. And we don't want to get too mixed up saying, well, I want to follow God, or I want to follow, not the church, but they forget. The church is Christ. Christ is the leader, head of the church. And he established people, like, where does fasting thing come from? Well, it's from the apostles, which from our Lord. And that's all what the people say, well, it's this church law. I want to, even though... The priest can give a dispensation, and you're like, wow, wow, how's the priest have the power to give a dispensation? And we keep forgetting that, you know, God gave you know, the power of the church to loosen and bind, and by that obedience, because someone will say, well, I've never eaten meat on Friday my whole life, and the church gave me a dispensation, I'll, I'll not eat the meat. But with that, it's tainted with pride. So, while how God established the church is to cure all those prideful things to get us closer. So by having that faith in God, say, well, I guess we're eating today because you know, I've got a sensation and the rest of the family, I don't want to be that one, like, I'm holier than everyone else. So we do have to be careful not to fall into that, which through the church is how Christ established it, is to, for the humility that's very, very much easy to, you know, to try to avoid humility and how everything is established in the church with the sacraments, and even the confession and everything. That humility is the only way that God sees that for us to bring us closer to Him. Because this is, Catholic faith is the only one that can, you can have humility, especially our founder, Peter Christ, um, having humility himself. So, no other religion can, can follow our Lord in humility. It takes sanctifying grace with the Catholic Church. So we do want to take this time to definitely pray for others. And remember, as of today, in the epistle and in the intro, um, Gaudete in Domino Semper, rejoice in the Lord always. And we do have plenty to rejoice about. We want to keep that sanctifying grace in our souls.
And with that, I remember there's so many people that don't have it. There's so many people that, you know, we have to keep continuing to prayer and all that, but it's something that we don't want to, because we have it, we have that gift. We don't want to run up in the mountain and say, you know, I'm going to keep it till I get judged. That's not why God gives it to us. It is to help others, to help everyone else, and every these little trials that come our way, remember that, we have to remember that the Master, right, he, you know, suffered it all, that nothing compares to that. And uh, remember how we do have our Blessed Mother and the saints always there with us. And with that, in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.